God calling. <laughs> you know, it's funny. As uh, my wife was asking me, she says, with all those blogs, you know, and all that networks, you know, and all the different posts and places and locations that go on, she says, how do you keep track? I said, it's pretty easy, actually. I said, I don't. <laughs> In the Old Testament, there was a time when the kings of Israel tried to keep track of everything. And they wanted to number the people to see just how many there were. And God forbid that. And part of that has to do with the idea of controlling every detail of your life or the lives of others. And you know, that's kind of like how I keep track of, oh, I think I have eight networks now and... 75 blogs and <laughs> I don't know something like that and it's not software and it's not eware and it's not all the different programs that make it easier to post to but it's just simply knowing that you don't have to be in control all you have to do is the simple things that God tells you to and he'll open the doors and he'll show you the way and it'll either grow or it won't it'll be maybe like a lodgepole pine that has branches shooting off in every direction, which is kind of weird. Or it might be just a beautiful blue spruce that grows up tall and pyramidical and looks gorgeous. But you see, both have a purpose in the kingdom of God. The lodgepole pine is a pretty cheap pine, and guess what? A lot of people use it for firewood. And part of the reason it's called lodgepoles is because it grew everywhere, and natives were able to use it, the branches and the stock itself, for lodgepole <laughs> where blue spruce uh, I love looking at blue spruces everything has a purpose in God and you know posting and writing those and having them all over the place that just gives the opportunity for people to find it when they're looking or to hear it when they need it because if it wasn't done for just one it's not done for the Sun if you're looking for numbers and you're trying to keep track of everything and trying to build your own little a maniacal kingdom to the clouds, you know, and you're trying to build a new Nimrod celestial palace, you know, on top of the Tower of Babel. The only thing I can tell you is that it'll turn out like Babel eventually. But what you should do in every day, in every way, is just be simple. Go to God in the morning, go to God at noon, and go to God at night. And in between times, I think he'll take care of you because he'll keep you in his sight. Glory, glory dawneth. <laughs> Some of the names of these crack me up. I am, with, I am planning for you. Wonderful are my ways beyond your knowledge. Oh, realize my bounty and my goodness more and more. The wonder of being led by me. The beauty of a guided life. These will enter your consciousness more and more and bring you ever more and more joy. You are very nearly at the point when you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. You have entered upon a wonderful era. Your lives are planned and blessed by me as never before. You are overcoming. You are counting all things but loss if you gain, if you can win me. And the promises to him that overcometh are truly wonderful and will always be fulfilled. You know, at the time that this book was written, this little devotional, we didn't have quite as much of a give me, get me, you know, feed me, take care of me attitude. In those days it was like, you know, They'd heard so much hellfire and brimstone, they need a little encouragement. <laughs> and I think God swings the pendulum that way. I think in Christendom, if you look at the history of the church, whether it be from the earliest centuries, the disciples that walked with Jesus, to reformations, to the Protestant movement, to denominations, to non-denominations, to evangelicalism, to Pentecostalism, to all of them, if you look at the big picture, you see that sometimes it's like a pendulum swing. One minute you get all these conservative ideas and you get Puritanism where it's so conservative that everybody's wearing covers that look very somewhat distorted from Jewish, but they look very much like, you know, God forbid that you touch anything or see anything or be anything. And they even got so carried away, they started killing people as witches. <laughs> and as they proved later, they weren't witches. 
And then you get the opposite swing where it swings back the other way where God says, okay, I'm going to now, I want to influence the entire body of Christ, so I'm going to have some really crazy times here, you know, and people get carried away from rolling on the ground to barking like dogs to jumping up and down and excited. And you know, in some ways, now don't get me wrong, I'm not a universalist, but in some ways that's okay. Because most of the time it's just people trying to do the best that they know how with their relationship with God as they understood it at the time. Now, God does judge. We suffer the consequences of our own choices. But grace applies for our salvation and for our forgiveness. So you can come to God, you know, with your misunderstandings and with your understandings. And you can always find mercy at his throne. You may not find mercy with men because... <laughs> I can tell you this. The one thing that Jesus knew about his 12 disciples, they didn't all agree. <laughs> and he even had one that betrayed him. What kind of pick is that? <laughs> but if you recognize that that kind of pick of people was meant to be, then you know what you're meant to be. You're meant to be you. And I'm meant to be me. And we're meant to be different. So you see... When God's speaking, it makes sense. When we're speaking, it can get very confused very quickly. So always seek the Lord. Walk with Him. And you know what? If you do, He'll talk with you.